here's part eight of they all died screaming. You're helping me. You're helping me. And now after the weird bar scene of chaos, we go back to the boy. The boy is sitting in the living room as the man brings in more veal. A mom and a daughter. The man tried to snatch the young daughter, but also got the mom as well after when he threw the girl in the truck. The mom came out mama bear style and the man brought her here as well. Now the man makes it pretty clear that he is not attracted or aroused by human women and his wife is the sow out back. At this point in the story, the boy is in his, the boy, the boy, the boy is in his teens now. He's been there for years. He's kind of been brainwashed into living this life with the man. The man is now technically his pa, and the boy is learning how to kidnap Veal. I believe the boy is about 12 at this point, and when the Veal are brought in the house, they are stripped naked, and uh, as he was witnessing the mother being stripped naked he liked what he saw and the the man noticed this and he's like ah oh boy oh you never had a lady before have you hmm the man cracked a couple creepy jokes to this literal child and um uh, it's also noted that the man never bought the boy new clothes since he was taken so since he was like six years old he's worn the same outfits and when he started growing up to be quite bigger than his old clothes uh the new veal these young girls that are kidnapped and brought to the house he's just ended up wearing their clothes so he's just been rocking dresses or leggings or uh girl clothes as a 12 year old boy now so after the mom stripped naked and the boy likes what he saw, the man pulled the boy into another room and he's like, look, when I first brought you here, you had a little ID card on you. And you know what today is? Today's your birthday. Because I saw on your card that your birthday is this particular date. Enter a date of July here. Happy 13th birthday, boy. You know... When I was your age, my pa took me hunting to show me what it's like to be a real man. So now that you're 13, I'm going to do what my pa did to me. I'm going to teach you how to be a man. We're going to go hunting. We're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to hunt. And you know what? I might get you new, new clothes because you're, you're a man now. And the boy's just like, really, pa? Oh, gee willikers. Thanks. I, I don't know what to say. I don't even remember my life outside of this pig farm here, Paul. I can't wait. So back at the bar, it was absolute pandemonium. Chuck, Leslie, Eugene, Barman, and Shitty made their way out of the bar and down the street. They call them the Screamers. The people who are infected with the scream only seem to attack each other, not the non-affected people, which is pretty non-typical to like a zombie movie. Zombies don't typically go after themselves, but in this case, the screamers tear each other apart, literally. Stores along the street are shut down, people are caged up and panicking. Chuck decides, hey, you know what would be a good idea? We could shelter in place at my apartment. I know it's a bit small, but, I mean, we're all not infected right now. Let's let's go grab more alcohol, and let's go back to my place, since we're all friends here. So they made their way down the street, wheeling shitty with them, and they go to a local, small, family-owned liquor store. An Indian man named Fidel owns the place, and he already caged up the area he's trying to close up shop no noting the the budding virus in the area so when they got there they knocked on the door and they're like fidel hey buddy uh, we just want to spend some money uh, i know it's a bit chaos out there and i promise none of us are infected but fidel wasn't having any of it he stuck a, a sh large um pew pew 
large shotgun out the window, pointing it at all their faces. And he's like, I understand what's going on out here and I need to keep myself safe. And typically when things go bad, people start robbing stores and I have the goods that people want. So if you make a sharp movement, I'm blowing your freaking heads off. And they're like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, buddy, we're friends. We like you. You like us. We're in here all the time. All we want is a couple bottles of this brand of booze and a couple bottles of this brand of booze. Uh, can you do that for us? They held out the dollar bills that they had in their pockets and Fidel uh, handed them bottles. And before they handed the cash over, I guess Eugene made a sharp movement and Fidel blew his head off. Yeah, Eugene got shot in the face. But Eugene is still alive. Miraculously, he just has a massive head wound. Yeah, so they took the bottles home. Fidel panicked, shut shop, just pulled the gun back, shut down the shop, took the money, and everyone started freaking out and panicking and trying to patch the wound. They drug Eugene back to the apartment with the bottles in hand. Yeah.